Hi Kingsland kids and welcome back to another video on David the Warrior Poet. Really excited you're joining us again and I've got a lot of really interesting things to talk about today. We're going to be talking about something that David did that was really bad and really affected his legacy for the rest of his life so much so that we're talking about it now. This is a really interesting story in the Bible and I hope that it isn't too awkward for you to hear about, so we'll make this quite brief if we can. So a little recap of where we're up to. David is king, he's finally king over Israel and Judah, and he keeps going, he keeps taking more ground for the Lord, and he keeps doing amazing things, until one day he finds himself at home on his own with not a lot to do. David makes a really serious mistake, and it really haunts him for the rest of his life and really affects the outcome of how we see him. A lot of people probably don't want to talk to their kids about this story, but I think it's really important that you guys know that the people in the Bible aren't always perfect. Sometimes they're held up to us as perfect examples, but they're not perfect. They make lots of mistakes, and David makes a really serious mistake here by sleeping with another man's wife. Now, it's really unclear how this happens in the Bible, but the circumstances don't seem to be good either way. And David is doing something really wrong, and we all know this sort of thing is really wrong. However, what comes next is, is just as bad, if not worse, because David then freaks out because he finds out that this woman he slept with is pregnant with a baby and it's going to be his. So what he does is he decides to make sure that the man who is the husband to this lady, whose name is Bathsheba, I'm sure you've heard of her, comes home and sleeps with her so that it's not awkward for her. But he doesn't do it. So David has the husband, whose name is Uriah, killed. But these are not the sort of stories we expect to hear about King David, the, the greatest king in all of Israel's history. But have you ever heard of someone or known about a celebrity maybe who you think is perfect, who's never done anything wrong, and then you find out they've done the, uh, something really bad and you're not sure how to feel about them anymore? I know I have. I know there have been people in my life who I thought were great and then they've made mistakes and it's really made me feel a bit different about them. So David thinks he's gotten away with this and he kind of goes on with his normal life until Nathan the prophet comes to visit him. And we're going to read a little bit from 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, verse 7 through to verse 10. So Nathan comes and talks to David, and he gives him this example of someone stealing something from, from someone else, and David gets a bit angry, because of course he does. He's the king and he wants justice. And then Nathan says this to him, so starting from verse 7. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you, and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword will never depart your house, because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. And actually also in verse 12, we're just going to read this, it says, You did it in secret, but I will do things in broad daylight before you. So, God knows what David's done, and he sends his prophet to go and rebuke him, tell him off. I hate it when I get told off. Do you hate it when you get told off? Especially when other people are watching. Especially in a public place. I remember my mum told me off a couple of times in public and I got so embarrassed. And sometimes I'd cry. And it was just, it's just awful, isn't it? David gets told off. So there are a couple of things that I want you to learn from this story that are really important. And the first thing is that God sees what we do. God loved David. He loved him so much, he chose him to be king, but he still saw the bad stuff that he did. And he still kept him in line and told him when he was doing bad things. And that's not a bad thing, actually. Sometimes we think being told off is a bad thing, but actually, when God tells you you're doing something wrong, it helps you to start to do things right. So God always sees what we do, and sometimes he might tell us off, 
or sometimes we might not get what we want, even when we, we think we should, because maybe we've done something wrong, or maybe we need to be taught a bit of a lesson, kind of like David here. But the second thing is that God forgives us. God forgives David for, for this stuff, even though he doesn't have to. And David becomes an even better king after this. And he sorts his ways out. And he really fixes his eyes on God. Now he makes some other mistakes as well. And he does some other things that aren't great in his life. And he has some problems with his family as well that we might talk about a little bit later. But God forgives him. And that's the most important thing for you guys today. Is that it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. God will forgive you. He loves you. He sees what you do. He loves you anyway. And he forgives you when you say sorry. That's the important thing. So make sure you say sorry when you've done something wrong. It's good to apologise to our parents, our siblings, our, our friends when we do things wrong, but you've also got to say sorry to God, because ultimately, He's the one who can forgive us the best. So make sure you say sorry to Him. I know I have to do it a lot. I'm sure your mum and dad have to do it a lot, and the people around you have to do it a lot. But make sure you say sorry. That's the best thing we can learn from this story. So when we make mistakes, ask for forgiveness. Hope you guys are okay. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. Be nice to your parents. I'll see you again soon.